Welcome in everyone, I'm Slayer. Today we're going to discuss detailing. I've had some questions about process and things having to do with detail, so I hope this is a nice little discussion to start to break down what detailing is to me or how I define it. I hope this is helpful for folks that are looking at trying to get a better understanding of what they can do to detail or to advance those skills. This is also a type of conversation we have a lot live at twitch.tv slash slate3k. We often discuss detailing and different process for it, along with discovering new assets that might be helpful as we detail. Be sure to hit the subscribe button. I'd love to have you guys back around. And without further ado, let's have our discussion about detailing. So what is detailing? I've divided this into three categories. First, we'll start off with light detailing. This can be somewhere between vanilla and slightly modded with uh, either no or a few assets. Now, before you balk and you say, well, you can't detail with vanilla, which is something I think is misconstrued. You can, now, if you consider DLC, which I do as a part of the vanilla base game, uh, with Park Life, for example, you get things like fences, right? Fences are a detailed type asset that you can use to set up property lines, which is one of the things that I typically recommend for people to try if they wanna start getting into detail. And why is that something I typically recommend? Well, property lines exist all over the place. They exist with commercial properties, residential properties, farms, wherever. It's something that you can utilize across your entire city. So if you are doing light detailing, there's a range of things you can use. This may be because of computer constraints or maybe just your interest level. I do think this also includes console players. I think that the content creator packs give console players a little bit more flexibility along with some of the DLCs that have released there. And I've seen some cities that console players have come up with that actually look detailed like they could be on a computer. Maybe not to the same extent, given that PC players typically have a much wider range of assets that they can use. Now, again, depending on how you define your light level of detailing, medium is also gonna be a range. So I'm gonna define it as a significant jump in mods, maybe 50 plus mods or whatever. You're gonna have mods that alter the look. You're gonna have mods that alter how you manipulate assets and what you can add to the game. I feel like medium detailing is such a broad range. A lot of folks are gonna fit in this category. What's significant about it is, is that this is where you start to add more things in like maybe decals. You're adding a lot of props. You're developing street sides that have cafes and all of these sort of things. Maybe where it stops is when you start to getting into more procedural objects. This would be just to manipulate assets while you're playing cities, customizing props, decals or whatever to fit into the space that you have. What's interesting here is you start to end up in this very realistic world that you're playing with. And I use realistic a little bit loosely. I'm not saying it has to be a one-to-one, -one, but I definitely think if you're doing heavy detail, you're headed in a direction to create something that is visually real. You want it to seem lifelike, like it's actually there. This is where we get into that whole conversation where you're looking at a city and you're confused as to whether it's Google Maps or a photo. So heavy detailing probably includes something like procedural objects where you can manipulate items in game while playing. You're doing so much with that. You're basically playing a different game at that point. So with medium detailing, maybe you have a lot of the mods in place and you're just kind of adding to that. But I think heavy detailing often requires a lot more assets. You're looking at needing a large density of items to really make your city come to life. And that's not the case everywhere, but potentially you're going to want enough variety to make many areas unique. And if you're modeling something like a one to one or off real life, the need for assets just increases dramatically. With medium detailing, obviously we've already made things look a little bit more realistic. Maybe we're adjusting some areas here and there to increase the realism of your city, but heavy detailing is when all the items really start to take effect and give you that impression of a city that is far beyond what you get with vanilla. We are doing so many things mod wise to manipulate the game and even increase efficiency of the game so that we're able to continue this exploration of how far we can push it. Heavy detailing can be creating one-to-ones. It can be developing cities that are so incredibly dense because you've changed the fundamentals of the game. I've seen cities, again, that are beautifully detailed that are more on the lighter end. And then you have cities that are absolutely stunning that are photorealistic. But what is the process to get there? I look at it in a sense of layers. How many layers can we add to make this look better or more realistic? So between light detailing and heavy detailing, it's just adding more layers to your city. Maybe you start off with a street, right? You have zone buildings or place buildings, your preference. Now, what goes around those buildings? What goes in that empty space between two buildings? What should be on the sidewalk? What's in the backyard of a residential home? 
Now consider that may be easy for a handful of homes, but when you start getting into dozens and dozens of houses that you want each one to have its own personality, it becomes a little bit more of a struggle. But creating density is really what makes things look more real. In my opinion, if you can create density, especially in a downtown area, and there's assets and props filling dead space, you don't just have green base game grass sitting there. You're starting to add to the layers that exist in your city that are going to make it stand out. You can also base it off the geographic location that you want your city to be in. So then you start looking at it from the perspective of like what might a building in that area of the world have around it. Is it likely that they'd have a cafe? Would they have a specific restaurant? Or perhaps it's just a street for pedestrians where shops are on either side of the path. And if you're thinking, man, I should really look around me more and see what's around me. Exactly. How do you make something look realistic? Well, we model it after what we know. So interesting thing is that most of my cities are based on the US and that's kind of by choice, but it's also what I'm most familiar with. I've had folks ask me to do European style cities and I struggle with it. I'm more accustomed to Southeast US and Midwestern and I tend to get in a better zone when I'm working on cities like that. So yes, consider what's around you or what's around the city that you wanna build, geographic location, details of that area of the world. This should go into choosing everything from buildings to trees, to plants, watercolor with theme mixer. So many things can be factored in. And these are bigger choices you're gonna make that are gonna affect the way your city looks without doing as much of the prop and decal type asset work. This is covering the broader strokes of the painting. And this can factor into every single category of detailing, whether it's light or heavy detail work. So back to the idea of a process. This has been a question that's come up so many times. What is my process for detailing? And it's tough for me to define. Sometimes it's erratic, but I would say that no matter what, I try to break everything up into layers. And I know I've used that word a few times, but that's the only way I know how to define it. I look at things, for example, if I see a pavement texture, a sidewalk, what can I add to the sidewalk? Well, I might start with a decal. Maybe we change it from pavement to brick. Then I look at something vertical away from the building, closer to the road to add some verticality, but also to break up the monotony of just having a flat sidewalk. And I start thinking of bullards or maybe planters with trees. Oh, and then we could go in and we could add things like advertisements on the sidewalk. We could add benches, tables, chairs, trash cans, maybe a mailbox or maybe a food truck. Oh, and then there's things we haven't factored in like lighting. Now lighting might be a little bit heavier than you want to do, but consider that, yeah, you might have a street light attached to your road, fine. But what if you wanted a separate light for pedestrians? Maybe you wanted to mount a light on the side of a wall, like attached to the building, or maybe you want hanging lights above a little seated area. Again, it's totally up to you. The process is really just about creating density. So layers and layers of assets, including props, decals, trees, bushes, various buildings. Fill the space that you have. Fill your canvas with different items and things that bring it to life. The more you do that in especially smaller areas that you would think, oh, no one's gonna notice this. Those are the kind of areas that really can stand out. So in the video you've been watching, I've been setting up a downtown area. And you can see in that space, it's a pretty large city block. I've started by having an idea, at least of a couple buildings I wanted to place. So first we placed a building that we wanted in that space. You can even go ahead and place a couple of buildings so you have less space that you think you have to fill and you're more focused on filling what's left. I start off with doing things like decals. Let's put down brick in front of the building and this kind of tiled concrete on the side where the food trucks are. Look to add in paths where you can to help create lanes for pedestrians to walk. That'll make it look more lively like people are actually interacting with props. So paths and decals for that matter are typically flat, right? They're gonna go onto the ground surface level. What do we need to put on top of that? Well, your paths typically add light posts, which is great, but then you may need props and whatnot to go on top. So you can add things like benches, planters, trash bins. Maybe a fountain needs to go in the middle of a square type area. Then you can look at the edges of the path. Typically paths, you might notice like some weird edges, right? They look a little bit jagged or goofy, especially in what you're seeing on, on the screen right now. I typically find myself adding bushes to a lot of edges of paths just to cover up the jaggedness. You can even overlap the concrete slightly just to make it look more clean. You can use prop line tool to speed this process up dramatically. Now, while I'm playing at probably a medium level of detail, you could also consider having different textures in place with your pathing to make it look worn out, or you could get into placing decals specifically to create wear and tear in your pathing. 
You could also go into your grass and make it look like it's been mowed recently. And as you well know by now, the possibilities are pretty endless to what you can do. If you wanna make your city off the bat look more detailed, look at filling the dead space. Look at filling the gaps between buildings or roads. Throw some extra trees in, do things like that, and you're instantly gonna see a difference in your build. When you start to fill in those spaces, then grass becomes a little bit more of a premium. It makes sense where you start to leave it like maybe next to a highway, creating a slope from the road to where your downtown is. Things will make a little bit more sense. Whereas if you just have gaps of space, it's gonna look empty. And when you're in a downtown environment, land is typically at a premium, right? Everything should be filled or developed. And this could be in stark contrast to your farm area. Maybe that's a little bit more spread out. Maybe there's more dead space, which is grass or fields. I would say this to sort of wrap up. Begin with your networks. Put your roads down in a way that you want them depending on geographical location or style of your city. Find the buildings you want to place. You can create a palette of buildings and work them into a city block if you need to. Then look around the buildings. Create density around them, utilizing nature or props, assets, man-made things. Maybe a parking garage is all you need with a couple of trees. Fill the space, give it life, give it texture, give it density, and you'll instantly see your city becoming more lifelike, more real. And I think you'll be impressed at what you can do with your city by adding things around networks and buildings. And I think that's how I typically define detailing. It's giving your city life. It's giving it another dimension of detail and density that it really starts to set itself up. And it doesn't have to model after real life, although that can be really, really useful for at least learning how to detail. But you can make cities in fantastic places and sci-fi worlds. You can do so many different things with this game. It's quite impressive. So have fun with it. See what you can create. See if you can create environments that are enriched with different props, assets, and things. And see how that changes the way you look at the world around you and the way you play the game. Now what you're seeing in the cinematics is actually the city that I'm working on and I've actually taken the detail section that we've built up and remodeled it slightly to fit the block a little bit differently. But here's how it encompasses the area and how it looks in the middle of the town. If you're interested in seeing some other ideas on how to detail, check out my city scenes videos or my retaining wall video. Those are pretty helpful in maybe giving you some ideas of things to actually create or work on. If you have a suggestion for a YouTube video or anything that I should add to the channel, drop it in the comments below. I'd love to see some ideas for how we can break down different areas of detailing or different tutorials that we can make. We have this discussion a lot on the Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash late3k, and I thought it would be helpful to bring it up with the YouTube audience to talk about detailing and a little bit more of an open discussion. So I hope you enjoyed it. Another way you can keep up the discussion is to join our Discord. There'll be a link in the description below. For now, that's it, guys. Catch you next time.